Did you know that vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world, second only to saffron? Yet the farmers who grow it in Madagascar are still living in poverty. Sounds paradoxical, doesn't it? Welcome to the world of vanilla. A spice so exquisite, so fragrant, and so labor-intensive that it commands a price second only to the exalted saffron. But let's pause for a moment and ponder on this paradox. The spice is expensive, yet the people who toil day in and day out to bring this green gold to our tables are struggling to make ends meet. Madagascar, an island country off the southeast coast of Africa, is a significant player in the global vanilla industry. It is responsible for a whopping 80% of the world's vanilla supply. Each vanilla orchid, grown in the rich fertile soils of Madagascar, blooms for just one day a year. The farmers have to hand pollinate each flower, a process that is laborious and time-consuming reflecting the high cost of this prized spice. Yet despite the hard work, despite the high global demand, and despite the soaring prices, with vanilla fetching as much as $600 per kilo in 2018, the farmers in Madagascar live in poverty. This is the paradox of the vanilla industry. In Madagascar, vanilla is often referred to as green gold. The term is a testament to the high value of the spice. It's a symbol of hope and prosperity in a country where many are struggling to survive. But while the spice is gold for some, it's far from that for the farmers who nurture it. So, why are Madagascar's vanilla farmers not reaping the benefits of this green gold? What's behind this paradox that the world's second most expensive spice is grown by some of the world's poorest farmers? Let's delve into the reasons behind this paradox. Vanilla production is no easy task. In fact, it's one of the most labor-intensive agricultural processes in the world. Let's take a closer look at this intricate procedure that begins with the delicate vanilla orchid, the plant responsible for the world's second most expensive spice. The vanilla orchid is a fickle creature, blooming for just a single day each year. Yes, you heard me right, just one day. In this narrow time frame, the farmers in Madagascar, who are responsible for 80% of the world's vanilla supply, have to ensure every flower is pollinated, or they risk losing an entire year's crop. Now, this isn't your typical pollination process. The vanilla orchid isn't native to Madagascar, which means there are no natural pollinators for the plant on the island. So each and every flower must be hand-pollinated by the farmer, a process as intricate as it sounds. Imagine this. The farmer, armed with a tiny stick or a sliver of bamboo, must gently lift the rostellum, a flap of tissue inside the flower, to expose the stamen and the stigma. Then, using the same stick, the farmer must carefully press the pollen from the stamen onto the stigma. All this under the sweltering Madagascar sun and for each and every flower on the vine. The labor doesn't stop there. Once pollinated, the flowers will produce pods that need to be hand harvested. The pods are then blanched, fermented, and dried all processes that require close monitoring and careful handling. With all these efforts, one might imagine a hefty payoff. Yet, this is hardly the case for the farmers in Madagascar. Despite the high global price of vanilla, the farmer's income is far from stable. You see, the vanilla trade is a roller coaster of highs and lows. The price of this green gold fluctuates wildly, often due to changes in supply and demand. In a good year, a kilo of vanilla can fetch up to $600 but in a bad year, that same kilo might only bring in $50. It's a risky game, and the farmers bear the brunt of it. Now you might be wondering how this happens. Well, it's a case of the market's invisible hand, not always playing fair. When the price of vanilla soars, large-scale buyers like ice cream manufacturers might switch to cheaper synthetic substitutes. This reduces demand, and the price drops. When these buyers switch back to natural vanilla, the demand rises, and so does the price. Yet, even when the price is high, the farmers see only a fraction of the profits. A large chunk of the money goes to the middlemen, the traders who buy the vanilla from the farmers and sell it to the distributors. These middlemen often have more bargaining power and can pressure the farmers into selling at low prices. Then, the distributors, who export the vanilla to consumer countries, take another cut. They have costs to cover, sure, like transport and quality control, but the share left for the farmers, the ones who do the hard work of growing and harvesting, is often disproportionately small. This system, where the farmers bear the risks and get the smallest reward, is fundamentally unfair. It leaves them vulnerable to the whims of the market and at the mercy of those further up the supply chain. These factors contribute to the persistent poverty among the farmers despite the high value of their produce. 
The story of Madagascar's vanilla farmers is a stark reminder that a high price tag doesn't always translate to prosperity for those at the start of the supply chain. As if the challenges weren't enough, vanilla farmers also have to deal with another problem. Vanilla thieves. Yes, you heard it right. Vanilla theft is a real issue that further impoverishes these farmers. Imagine this. You've worked tirelessly, hand-pollinating each delicate orchid bloom, nurturing them in the most meticulous way possible, only to have your precious crop stolen right before you could harvest. That's the harsh reality for many vanilla farmers in Madagascar. But why would anyone resort to stealing vanilla? Well, the answer lies in its staggering price. With vanilla being pricier than silver, it's no surprise that it has become a lucrative target for thieves. These thieves, often desperate locals themselves, sneak into the plantations under the cover of night. They harvest the vanilla pods prematurely, which, while it fetches them quick money, is detrimental to the quality of the vanilla. This premature harvesting results in poorer quality vanilla, which eventually drives down the global market price. So, how are these farmers dealing with this issue? They're resorting to various measures to protect their green gold. Some farmers have taken to sleeping in their fields, braving the elements to guard their crops. Others have formed community watch groups, taking turns to patrol the plantations at night. Additionally, some farmers are marking their vanilla vines with a unique identifier, making it easier to trace stolen goods. These efforts, while commendable, are not always foolproof. The lack of a robust legal and law enforcement system in rural Madagascar adds to the challenge. These challenges highlight the harsh reality behind the lucrative vanilla industry. While we enjoy the sweet aroma of vanilla, let's take a moment to acknowledge the bitter truth behind its production. The paradox of the vanilla industry in Madagascar is indeed a complex issue. Let's take a step back and consider the main points we've discussed. Firstly, we've delved into the labor-intensive process of growing vanilla. Each orchid blooms for just one day a year, and hand pollination is an absolute necessity. This painstaking process is a testament to the dedication of these hard-working farmers, who are the backbone of an industry that supplies 80% of the world's vanilla. Secondly, we've examined the fluctuating prices of this luxury spice. At its peak in 2018, vanilla was priced at an astounding $600 per kilo, outpricing silver. But these high prices are not constant, they ebb and flow, and this instability leaves the farmers vulnerable. We've also explored the unfair distribution of profits. Despite the high price tag on the market, the farmers see only a fraction of these profits. Middlemen, exporters and retailers reap the lion's share, leaving those who toil in the fields with barely enough to sustain their families. And finally we've touched on the issue of theft. It's a sad reality that these farmers must safeguard their green gold from thieves who would rather steal than cultivate their own. The threat of theft adds another layer of complexity to an already challenging profession. In conclusion, the vanilla paradox is a stark reminder of the global inequality that exists within our economic systems. While vanilla continues to be a luxury spice, the farmers who grow it continue to live in poverty. It's a paradox that calls for attention and 